that only 17% of borrowers go back to the same It's called the dairy button, the red button that I hit. Hey, remember that? Right? In the, you know, oh yeah. Hello. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Laugh, Lend, and Eat the podcast. And uh, thank you all so much for listening. And uh, thank you so much for the new subscriptions we got last month. It was crazy. I think we got in about 100 new subscribers on YouTube. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, today I have the honor of having not one, not two, but all three of the owners of First Option Mortgage on the show with us. So welcome to Kurt Nikolai, Alvin Shaw, and Sahil Halani. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. You guys are high energetic crowd. Right? Let's get let's get this thing kind of pumping up a little bit, guys. We're doing fantastic. Doing? There Great. You go. No, thank you, Kurt. I appreciate that. Trust me, this is not live TV, so everything's being recorded. It's no big deal. So listen, I uh, obviously I've been with you guys now for gosh, it feels like forever, but I know so long <laughs> since last May of 2020, right during the pandemic, and um, I've seen a lot of obviously growth and stuff like that. But you know, before we get to all that, I, I kind of want to find out a little bit about you know where first option originated from where it started from i know you guys are based in atlanta right i've, I've always been based in atlanta right kurt so, that's correct so i think you were part of the impetus of this company right and and so you want to take us like you woke up one morning said hey i feel like opening my own mortgage company and i'm going to call it first option I wish it was that easy. Um, you know, I got started in the mortgage business back in the, the mid 90s. Uh, and I worked for one of our competitors, our previous competitors, for several years. Um, and that was back up in St. Louis. Transferred down here to Atlanta to open a branch, a third branch for them at that time in 2000. And really just um we were having we saw some internal problems with that that company and so we ended up leaving that company uh which was a blessing because that company is no longer in business mm -hmm. um and then actually partnered with some other guys that were part of that same organization but had left previously um so we got started with that and we were primarily a broker at that time um my previous partner and i realized that they were not in tune to not only becoming a correspondent lender, but also they weren't in tune to technology. And so we had our grievances amongst ourselves and we ended up getting forced out at, at in 2003. And thus we started first option mortgage at that time. Let me ask you a question. You brought up the word broker and, and that's, I mean, and really it's all, all three, all four of us, all three of us, whatever. Um, I mean, right now, it seems like the brokers have been having a comeback in the last several years. Obviously, what the years that you're talking about, Kurt, I mean, the brokers were more on the downslope. You know, I was around in 2003, 2004 also, and, and being a broker was not like a, as almost like the way it is today. It seems like they've done a really good job in rebranding themselves. I agree. I agree. I think that back in, in the early 2000s, I think that, as you mentioned, there was a decline in that broker world. Um, we felt as if the next step was to become a correspondent lender. Um, it just felt like the natural progression. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually started down that path in 2005 and got our correspondency at that time with the help of uh, Countrywide. Um, they helped us through that transitional period. Um, we just felt it was right at that time. Uh, we felt that it, was, it gave us more leverage. It gave us I don't know if you want to say just um, I'm, I'm looking for a word here. Um, it just it just gave us a better presence. Yeah, I mean, I being our the, own lender. I think the way you you, you phrase that thing is I, I I remember that for myself. I had my mortgage company also at that time, and it seemed like a, the way you said natural progression. It seemed like that's the right word. Like if you're really trying to grow a brand, not that you have to, right? But the natural progression does seem like okay. If I want more control of the processes and not be, you know I mean, at the whim of some other wholesale lender when they want to get the loan done. Uh, it does seem like the natural process to take. Now, Alvin, when did you join the company? So I, mean, I actually joined, I, I joined in 2003. I was, it was straight out of college. Um, you know, knowing that if I graduated with a finance degree, the goal was always to be in business for myself. Um, things in that, that year didn't transpire the, the way that they were supposed to. Um, but in the process, I was, you know, I was introduced to the mortgage industry. And so actually, I'm the other way around. I was first 10 years in, in the mortgage brokerage side. 
Okay. So I've only I, I only been on the, the lender side for the last eight years. So I've kind of seen both sides of it. And I think there's it's, there's a place for, for both parties, right? I mean, it really just depends on what the end goal and the objective is. Um, you got a better opportunity to scale when you're on the lender side. So if your intention is to become nationwide and build bigger, right? Um, then having that extra control and being able to service and, and whatnot and service meaning like even just the, the underwriting and funding, right? Is, is naturally, uh, it's gonna make it a little bit easier of a process as opposed to like you said, if you're dependent on, on a third party partner. Yeah, and obviously there's challenges, right? I mean, guys, I mean, there's challenges being a correspondent lender because you have skin in the game. And I mean, I'm not saying that brokers don't, but I mean, there is a little bit more, you guys are risking more uh, to have that control. And I remember, I don't know if you guys, I mean, I guess we can talk about this, why not? It doesn't seem like the pricing was that much more attractive being a broker versus a correspondent sometimes, right? It felt like, what am I doing all this for? I'm, I'm making an, an extra few percentage points and that's about it. Uh, and uh, the risk you take, sometimes you just got to wonder if it was worth it, but I, I'm sure it's different now with much of the scale you guys are on. So what has led to this growth? <clears throat> Because one of the things that I've seen here at First Option is that you guys have had some really like maximum growth at first in the last 24 months. You know, what, what's led to that? I think, you know, it's going back to what you said, right, in terms of the different channels and, and what it is, it comes down to specialization, right? And if you're a broker and you want to specialize in strictly on the sales side of it, right, and entertain your, your, your client base, right, and that's what you're going to be the best at, and that's a great place to be. If you're a United Wholesale Mortgage, and you want to service the broker community, but become specialized over there and create efficiencies through technology, then that's your place, right? For us, I think as a company, we've seen tremendous growth because we we put a lot, a lot of different pieces together. Mm -hmm. You know, all of last year when the growth came, uh, it was scaled growth, right? It was susceptible growth because like our operations department was able to hold through while the supply demand ratio in the market overall was was a mess, but we were able to pull through because of our Honestly, I will tell you, I think it was a lot of forward thinking, right, on our end of it, knowing, hey, that, that, that this is going to happen and how do we get ahead of the problem? I think it was a lot of hard work uh, that goes on, on the side of our people. I mean, there was, a, you know, my underwriters, my ops team, they're dedicated, you know, they're dedicated to, to, to their customers. They were working their tails off, right, to make it happen and being able to keep up with it. But because we pick certain areas and we specialize and said, all right, how do we become the best at this piece? And then how do we become the best at this piece? Mm -hmm. And then you put that puzzle together and, and that's how First Option saw a tremendous amount of growth. So let's, let's jump over to Sohail over here because obviously we're talking about history, we're talking about growth. And I know Sohail has to be the one who's counting all the beans right? <laughs> to make sure there's enough beans for all the things that we're planning and have been doing for the last 24 months. And I'm sure it's not an easy process. I mean, when you're in charge of finance and all the stuff that you've been doing, so that I see you doing, right? I mean, you, you're kind of, sometimes I, I swear, when I, and this is, this is all credit to you guys. Honestly, it feels like sometimes we're trying to put together the engine of a car while it's going around the lap. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to describe yeah. it, but that's the way I see Sohail by sometimes doing. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you this, that, you know, I'll, like my background, I, I came from a tax business. Uh, 2016, I joined uh, FOM. When I joined FOM, I saw one thing, that there were lots and lots and lots of similarities in a tax business and in a mortgage business in terms of the process. You know, like we have a tax preparer, you guys have a loan officer, you know, you guys have a processor, we have a processing department. And then, you know, you guys have a closing department. We have a very similar thing that when, when the processor process everything, Taxes are being filed. We received confirmation from IRS, you know, uh, underwriting, you know, the loans are approved. The tax returns are reviewed and approved and sent it to the IRS. And then we get the check where, you know, in this case, our customer gets the check. In your case, customer gets the check, but it is given to the seller or, or the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those processes are similar. And, you know, one thing I did in my, Past, I started with the two office and took me about seven years to grow from two to 10 and then another seven years from 10 to 200. And what I learned is what you really need to do is one, you need to make sure that all of your processes are in place. Mm -hmm. Also, you need to think strategically to make sure when thing goes up or down, 
you're ready for all the ups and downs. Not only that, also financially, you know, in the tax business, we earn three months and we spent uh, nine months without earning. So that financial needs to be so tight. And I think what I did was starting 2018, I joined them in an operation side and finance side and everything else. And I started looking at everything and I started applying all the skill set that I learned through making tons and tons and tons of mistakes <laughs> on the tax business, making sure we don't repeat any of those mistakes. So let me ask you and, something. And I'll tell you this, that come 2020, during that pandemic time, mm -hmm. we were operationally strong, we were financially strong, and we were ready for that jump and the opportunity presented to us and we made that jump you know, uh, almost triple our business. So is it easier to triple your business or is it easier to scale the business while you can control the growth? What, I mean, what, what's, I guess, is there a balance act there that you have to do or how do you, what, what are you looking for? That's, that's so, a good question. I'll tell you this, like I said, beginning of the pandemic and the end of the pandemic, because we were financially strong and we were operationally strong, and our business were ready to be scaled. We were, we were able to scale the business and we were able to accommodate all the growth with ease. Yeah. I'm gonna add to that, you know, it's, it, you can't just put it together and hope that you, know, you build it up as big as you want it. You have to work on your infrastructure, right? So I think in the beginning, you know, we spent and we dedicated a lot of time to making sure that our infrastructure was solid. Mm -hmm. And that infrastructure is so many things, it's our people. Right, it's our processes, it's our technology. When you put all of that together, and now you feel good about that, that you know what? But now I can pile on, and I can pile on, and it won't collapse because we we spent so much time working on that bottom layer first. So, Kurt, going back to you, I mean, when we talk about that infrastructure, I mean, obviously, I mean, you've been at it right since two thousand three, two thousand four, right? I mean, and and I know some of the people that are, that are part of your infrastructure. I mean where did you come up with these ideas? Did you just replicate them? Did you, I mean, because sometimes, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery, right? Or did you say, hey, I want to think outside the box because I will tell you this, some of the some of the things you guys are doing here, the rest of the industry is not doing. And I can tell you that when I've talked to other industry folks, they're like, are you sure you're doing that? <laughs> it takes a while for them to really, even myself, to really wrap my head around, yeah, they're really doing it that way. You know, I, I think... Um... A lot of it is is dependent on obviously your employees. Um, you know, it, it's taken us a long time to get to where we are, but I do believe that from a management standpoint, we have you know an all star team. Um, and the second thing is we listen to the field. The field is going to tell you where the issues lie, and then it's up to us to come up with solutions to figure out how to solve those problems. Um, you know. You know, I look back on it. It's been a journey. It hasn't been easy. Mm. Um, we've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations and we've made a lot of mistakes, but it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with making mistakes as long as you learn from those mistakes and then you implement processes that solve those mistakes moving forward. And we've been really, really good about doing that. So Kurt, dive deeper a little bit. Give me a mistake you made that you learned from. I mean, like something that, you know, like I can look back in my career, I'm sure all three of us can, right? And say, oh my God, yes, I remember that mistake. And thank God, because that mistake led to this new thing that I came up with. Give me a mistake. Well, some of the, some of the bigger mistakes, and I, 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 I keep falling back to 2007, 2008, when, when things really hit, hit the brakes. Um, you know, there were a couple of things that happened during that period of time um, that, that will never leave my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. First and foremost, um, you never put all your eggs in one basket, whether whether that's warehouse banks, whether that's investors, um, you know, with the warehouse banks, you got to have multiple, you got to have great relationships with each and you've got to treat each with respect and give them proper amount of volume, right? Nice. The other thing too is um, we, we internally, we don't close the loan if we don't have a secondary outlet. Sure. You know, you're going to run into situations where you do make a mistake. You need to have an op a second option. And back prior to 2007, that those two things weren't ever really a concern. Um, knock on wood, we went through 2007, 2008, and there was only one loan that we couldn't unload. Um, and then we had a warehouse bank step up 
and, and bail us out from another warehouse bank that decided that they weren't going to do business with us anymore. So, you know, and that's through relationships. That's through who you've learned and trusted over the years. And that goes a long way with me because I still have relationships that probably are 15 plus years in this business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So looking forward, guys, I mean, look, you know, we all just came back from the Vision 2021 Summit. And now that, I mean, I mean, the, the amount of people we had at that summit, I mean, I don't know what Christine thinks, but I think we probably had about 10% of, of the crowd there, right? I mean, that's a huge amount of people participating from one company at a summit. Now, I know it was, I think, 300 people, right? Yeah. And I think we had close to 27 or 28 people show up on, from first option. Hey, did you plan that? Or did you just open up and say, hey, guys, let's go and go down to the summit? <laughs> um, it's it's somewhat planned. I mean, it wasn't planned to the point where it was like, all right, well, you're going, you're going. I think the, the seeds were planted, you know, uh, much in advance because it's not just, um, you know, I just picked up a bunch of people, showed up, they were part of the program, right? So, I mean, when they're coaching with Christine and, and with Ray, there's a familiarity. Uh, there's There was an award that was given out. I think we had like nine Women with Vision Award winners. So, right. you know, when they're winning, right, um, they want to be, others want to be a part of it. I think it's interesting because you said we were at 10%, give or take, but I think it's growing. I mean, you know, part of what you learn in through this coaching is how do you put your name out there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we did such a phenomenal job this time that even internally, our own people were like, hey, how do I get this? How, you know, what do I got to do to be a part of that, it's part of that society? And how do we win, right? Because yeah. I think that's what, what we've created here is a culture where we all, we, we all win together, right? We grow together. Right. And I think that's what sets first option apart over a lot of our competition, because, you know, internally, it's about, you know, hot, like our people, you know, we're, I tell people we're a mortgage, we're a people company, we're just doing mortgages, right? Yeah. Because that's the culture and, and, and the communication we've built up internally. So maybe you just do your awards trip to the summit every year. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> who needs, who needs to go to the Caribbean <laughs> or Mexico, right? You just go to Tampa, Florida, same thing. <laughs> be a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so... The reason I brought up the summit is because I had a lot of conversations that were around the summit, right, about technology and, and the technology that's going on in the industry today. You know, there's a lot. I mean, you know, I know me and Kurt have been in the business in the mid 90s. Alan, you've been in the business several years as well, but you're new to the industry. But still, we're at a point where technology is it. Like, we can't say anymore five more years, three more years. It's like, it's here right in front of our faces, right? And you guys are probably dealing with it a lot more than I see, right? But it's like, where do we go with the technology? How do we use it? Where is it best applied? Like, especially with the AI pieces I keep hearing about. Uh, who wants to tackle that question? Nobody. Okay, next I can, question. I can, I can, <laughs> no, I can take it. Technology's yeah. been here for, for many years, right? I mean, five years ago, we were talking about CRMs and point of sales systems. Right. In all reality, now it's 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 competitive in the technology world. Right. Because there's so many different uh, mm -hmm. people that want to play in that space. I think technology is now changing to where it's no longer just the front of the house. anymore, Right. Like, you know, you're, with the CRMs and whatnot. Now technology is taking over the back of the house. Right. And that's where your machine learning and your AI come into place, because what you know, we can do so much more in our in the mortgage industry. Right. Um, with the amount of sta the same staff that we have, if we were to properly utilize our, te our, our technology. So, I mean, Selva, you had something to say about the AI piece. Yeah, I, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna add to this, and you know, what I have seen in our tax industry, you know, preparing tax return from hand to everything electronically. Uh, I think this is what's going to happen in this mortgage industry. I already don't know what how much time is going to take. But it's not going to be, you know, I would assume probably five to 10 years down the road. This whole dynamic of, you know, uh, all the paperwork and all the documentation, everything will go electronic. I mean, everything will go electronic. And loan officer will be able to do a lot more loan. And there will be new companies that will pop up who are so efficient in processing the paperwork instead of doing closed loan. Mm -hmm. In 30 days, they will should be able to do loan in like say about three to five business days. And that's what we are looking at. And you know, whatever company is unable to catch up 
with that technological advancement will fall apart and all those new company will pick up those companies which are falling apart. So there will be some winners and losers moving forward. Yeah. And I think there will be a concentration, you know, it'll be a yeah. tough for a lot of small companies. I will, I, think, say, you know, I will say this real quick is that, you know, something you said, Alvin, just sparked this thought in my head was that while there's been technology since, you know, I mean, look, when I got the business, Kurt, you may remember, like we used to have the modems that you put the telephone on to get the credit report right on the dot matrix printer. Like that was technology, right? Because now you weren't waiting for the guy to fax it to you. You could actually dial the phone yourself, right? So what I've seen is like, there's been variations, right? But what I'm seeing in the last 24 months is new development. So the variation is not stopped. Is now there's no more variations of the same technology, right? It's like there's a brand new CRM platform all of a sudden. There's a brand new AI platform all of a sudden. It's not some enhancement that was already in place. And they said, oh, now you can tweak it this way. And so that's really what I'm talking about is the new development, the new technology that's out there that's living and breathing, you know, and, and you're able to kind of like let loose with clients and predict when they're going to buy a house. Yeah. That could, The artificial intuition, not intelligence, but intuition. That's the kind of technology that's really getting me all excited. One of the things I will tell you, and, and Fabi, you know, we've been in it for a long time. This, this past year with the pandemic, I think was good for our industry. I think yeah. it's forcing us to look at our industry differently Absolutely. because we were always so far behind of all other industries when it came to technology, when it came to automation. And I think these past 18 months has, has done our industry a world of good. And I think now we've got a momentum that will continue pushing us forward to all these new technologies that are out there. So I'm really excited about where things are going. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, you know, it's, there's some new players in the game right now, right? From what it was back in 07, 08. I mean, right now, you know, um, it, it, technology requires investment, right? And that's an upfront, you got to swallow it. Here's what it is, deal with it, right? And then become better at it. Now, the, the newer players that are in the game today are coming out with a mindset that they, this is not negotiable. Like, this isn't a choice. You're either, it, you're with it or you're not with it, right? Mm. And I think that's what's making all of the older players now saying, well, crap, we're going to fall behind if we don't keep up with the young cats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Kurt mentioned uh, Countrywide. And, you know, if you remember, Countrywide was like a huge, huge player, right? And, and, and the thing on Countrywide was no one could ever buy them because their servicing pool was so large until Bank America showed up one day and bought them out, right? And that's why I kind of see technology, to your point, Alvin, is that it's, technology seems like this really big price tag, right? But somehow or another, someone's going to come around and pay the price tag, and then the rest of us are going to follow. I think there's two parts of the equation, though, Fabi. Yeah, there's a price to the technology, but then you, on the flip side, you also have to take a look at what is this technology going to save me in the long run? Mm -hmm. Because I think with a lot of the technology that's being put out there, it creates more efficiency. So do I need as many man hours or do I need as many employees to get that same job done with this new technology? So that's a two-part equation that you have to look at. So to the grocery store, the analogy, right? Because I, I don't know about you guys down in uh, Georgia or Florida, but in here in D.C., we have those grocery stores with the self-checkout aisles. Have you seen those? They've yeah. Been around for years, right? And I asked my wife one day, we were checking out. I said, you know, we're checking these out ourselves. Shouldn't there be a discount? Because <laughs> they're not paying an hourly wage to anybody, right, to, to check me out anymore. They don't, they don't have the guy putting his stuff in the bag, right? I'm still paying the full price for that, you know, bottle of barbecue sauce or whatever I'm buying, right? And there's no discount to me. Is that the replacement we're looking at in the mortgage industry where the human being that used to run one cashier is now overseeing seven cashiers? I think I'll take that one. So I want to bring it back to the mortgage industry, right? Because I think the role of each individual within the organization, within the industry has changed. Your loan officers are not no longer paper pushers. They're problem solvers, right? Because that pushing the paper part that we were doing, now that's getting automated, right? Like, so I was saying, hey, you know what? At some point, we're going to be able to go through a loan process without many humans involved. But that doesn't mean that that human is gone. That just means that that human is now, you know, restructured to be the face of the company, to go out and get the business, to build a relationship. To, to help, you know, I mean, obviously there's going to be conventional A paper, easy loans, but there's difficult loans too, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a specialization, right? Our underwriters, instead of them clearing 
you know, uh, certain easy conditions. Now they're looking at the harder stuff and say, well, let me read all of these tax returns, right? So the quality of the individual in the industry, it goes from one level to the next level because technology forces them to, uh, to, to live themselves. So I'll tell you this, I have a little bit of a, a different view mm -hmm. uh, uh, of what Elvin said. Here's, here's what's gonna have happen. We're gonna have a two type of customer and one, one type of a customer, which Alvin just mentioned, you know, needs a relationship. Uh, that relationship customer will keep going down and there will be a smaller portion of that customer, but there will always be a customer out there. They need support and they need like service. What is gonna happen is as millennials are start buying home and as generation Z starts buying home, they will use more and more technology where they are not looking for relationship and they're looking for price. So hmm. I think there will be a market which is very technology driven and price sensitive and not, not like a grocery store, but when all those technologies are implemented, those people, the millennial and generation Z will get a better price because all the saving that are being achieved by utilizing technology will be used to compete towards the price because there will be more than one company and those several company, because they're achieving so much saving, they will compete in an area. There will not be a lot of companies. There will be like two, three companies or maybe four or five at the most who will be just focusing on the population who, are, don't, who don't want relationship at all. Hmm. They can just do all the work themselves, like a grocery aisle. There was a there was a, a a survey done by Capital One Bank a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. I'm not I can't remember. Maybe 18 months ago, and they did a survey of all the millennials, and surprisingly, they came back. Capital One Bank did with the survey said, "Hey, guess what? The millennials actually want human beings servicing them. They don't want the technology. When it comes to their finance, when it comes to their money." They want the human being there, and, and thus Capital One now started uh, over here at least these things called Capital One cafes, where where you can go in, have a cup of coffee, and discuss your finances with with a Capital One banker. Um, so they integrated some some thoughts, but they were still able to have that that touch. You know what I mean? In in an environment where they felt comfortable, so it was like a boutique setting. That's and, what they're saying. Like this next generation. If they wanted it at their terms, right? right? So instead of you calling them and saying, hey, I've got something for you, they want to start off online, right? But once they've now made a commitment that, yeah, yep. I want to do this, they're going to do the research. Right? Yeah. But then afterwards, they want the service too because they do want to deal with somebody. Um, the, the lower generation, the younger generation, they don't trust the banking system. So they want to see somebody face to face and yeah. say, all right, now I want to make sure you're doing a good job. And, and I think they also want the environment, which was really critical in the study to me, which, which Capital One was, that they want an environment that is not the one that their mom and dad grew up in. So it's not about the branch being open from nine to two. It's a cafe. It's a, it's a, it's a wine tasting thing. It's a oil painting seminar and you're going to discuss your finances at the same time. You know what I mean? All these different things that I've been seeing my local capital one bank do that they're inviting a bunch of people out. Hey, you know, come out out and learn how to paint while we discuss your retirement. I'm like, this is just, I mean, once again, they're, they're thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. right? And they're creating a, a, a feeling and a moment. And then in that feeling, the moment, they're anchoring their, their tools and their products within that consumer. So I think what they're doing is, this is their marketing technique. You know, in our time, we watched an ad. We, you know, uh, we, we looked at the television. We looked at the newspaper. I think all those things are, history mm -hmm. now a connection is made through social environment you know whether uh whether meeting in the coffee place or, or whether you know on the facebook or or whatever app out there and making a connection you know uh, uh, internet connection and the physical connection through all those uh vehicles yeah so you invoked the, the social media thing, so I'm going to go through that door now with Facebook, right? And you said the Facebook, so I think that we, we, we can see where, where this is going to end up now. So <laughs> uh, all three of you guys have Facebook. I know that for a fact because I've seen you all and I've friended you guys on Facebook, right? 
The only one that's active is Alvin. <laughs> That's because he's a lot younger than us. I got, I got, yeah, they got like 10 to 15 years on me. <laughs> so I, mean, I want to make a comment here. <laughs> Kurt, even though Alvin is a lot younger than us, when I talk to my kids, they go, you know, Facebook is for old people. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is actually old people now because the kids have moved on because Instagram. What, what, yeah. Yeah, what my what my daughter said to me is she didn't want to be on the same platform that her father and mother were on. Correct. <laughs> so she need she moved on. Now they have Instagram and TikTok and God knows what else, right? But where does social media fit in with 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 where we are as a mortgage industry? Because you know, once again, back to the summit, right? It was all about marketing. It was all about you know, what I mean, I was on that panel for UTV. You know, what I mean, like so basically, Alvin, you've created your own TV on Facebook, right? Whether you realize it or not. And you're showing the world, this is who I am. If you come work for me, this is my life. And I'm sharing it with you. Uh, Kurt, you've done something. I don't know what. <laughs> Not much. Not much. I will tell you, though, um, attending that Vision Summit last week, I think what I learned, and, and, and again, I think it's critically important. People want to deal with people that they have some form of connection with, right? And especially those that are out in the field, loan officers, those that are dealing directly with the public, I think it's critically important to have that. Um, now, I mean, again, I'm not saying that, you know, Sohill and I need to have a Facebook that is interactive. I mean, the people we deal with are on a different level, um, but somebody like Alvin that can connect through that, I think that he has that ability to do that much more so than, than Sohill and I. You're trying to teach dog, old dogs some new tricks and, and it just doesn't work sometimes. Um, but I do think it's critically important. I do think people do want to know who they're working with mm -hmm. before they actually start working with them. And I think it's a great platform to be able to do that. You know, they so say one thing is also what happens is, you know, your interest and, and your work. You know, if those two somehow requires you to use those social media, and like I said, your interest and your work, then, then it's just, you know, becomes part of you and you become, because I see some people who are way older than me and they are like so active on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram where, you know, sometimes my kids go, I don't know why this person is on Instagram. <laughs> you know, you know, there is no restriction. And it, it is your interest and, and your need. Those are the two things that dictate you to do whatever you need to do. And I feel this technology is not difficult to use. It's just whether you want to use it or not. It's, yeah. a, it's a commitment, right? Because at the, but at the end of the day, you know, you said it like you want to do business with who you trust, who you know, you know, who you can resonate with. And all of these, all the social media is just a platform to tell your story, right? Because yeah. at, you know, it's in this virtual world right now, how do you let other people know who you are, what you're, what you're about, what your philosophies are? This is how you, you, you put it out there. That's just, you know, this is your projection of your company and who you are as a culture. Do you guys ever see, and I, and I haven't seen it yet to the point that I'm about to ask you guys, but I have seen a, a figment of this where companies will start getting social media, like a social media officer, <laughs> right? This is like you have a, 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 a corporate financial officer or, 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 I mean, do you see somebody actually controlling the social media branding? Because look, there is a certain amount you know, I, some other companies don't want certain things put out on, on social media of their employees, right? And there's a lot of companies that say, hey, look, you can't do that. You can't do this. And they're controlling the individual social media platform, not even the corporate one, but just the individual. I mean, is that gone too far or is that appropriate given the, the, the nature of our business? <laughs> you know, I, I think I personally think the word control is not an appropriate word. But I think there is a need um, where there must be somebody in the company who can go, hey, you know what? Let's not do something that is inappropriate. Mm. Uh, and, and I think uh, disciplining in a way where, you know, removing or not showing your company, promoting those inappropriate whether it's, uh, you know, whatever you call a video clip, mm -hmm. comments, mm -hmm. things like that. Because, you know, one of the, one of the 
drawback of this social media is you can just go and say whatever whatever you feel like it yeah sometime sometime it may not be appropriate yeah I'm I'm laughing because we're just dealing with something very similar. To <laughs> okay, right now. yeah. You know, I, I think you know in this world that exactly what you said, control, right? When you tell people, hey, you can't or can do this, can or can't do this, now all of a sudden you're taking away my rights, right? And so there is a fine line there, but you don't want somebody, you know, misrepresenting who you are as a company right. either, right? right? So I think a lot of education goes on that behind to, the, to on that side of it to say, look, guys, this is who we represent. Right. I mean, you know, we do a lot on our end of it, try to push charitable uh, functions, things like that, because we want to show uh, the world that, look, hey, we're, we're, yeah, we, we want to help people. We want to give back to the communities, mm -hmm. our, the communities that we're in as well. Right. So that's one thing to do. It. But then then you kind of find somebody else on their own personal pages and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, I, I had a loan officer who was who was actually posted on so, on one of the this year, couple of years ago, but on, on, on one of the pages, you know, hey, look refinance or purchase now whatever and i'll refinance you for free in the near whatever i mean i don't think he gave a timeline and i called him and said how can you say you'll refinance somebody you don't know what the rates are going to be i mean if you're selling four and a half percent today and 12 months from now they're six percent you know what i mean he goes oh who cares it's just social media and that line just stuck inside my head when he said that like it's just and it's no it's it's you're representing my company you're representing the brand, and that begins to cross the line. He was, he was doing a buy one get one free loan. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like it could have been that, Alvin. Yeah, I mean, it could have been yeah, that. I'll tell you this, Fabi. I I agree with you. The word that you said is, if it is a company social media, then you know, we as a company have an image out there, mm -hmm. and. And, and that image, you know, brings people in. And not only that image brings people in, but based on that image, we act with each other. And, and if that image is being destroyed, you know, some of our action and some of our reputation may get destroyed. Yeah. So one, we need to make sure internally that, you know, we are like, like we present a family image. So first we need to make sure that internally we are acting as a family, you know, regardless of who you are right. and where you come from in, or what you do, uh, you know, because this is how it works in the family. Yeah. It, you know, we don't see a, a, a one person different based on his success or based on his job or based on his ability. Uh, you know, we treat everybody the same, yeah. same thing here. And, and if that is image, that image is not being presented somehow. And if that may be the personality of the person, then we need to reconsider yeah. that person or the message that has been given out by that person. And it's also a two-way street, right? I mean, I know that in the past when I've received resumes, I Google them, right? I want to go see their Facebook page. I want to go see what they're doing. And I will be honest about this, back in the days of MySpace, right, going back a couple of years, there was a lady who was coming on board as a loan officer, and I didn't hire them because she had a picture of her and a baby in a, in a high chair with a bunch of empty beer bottles around the baby on a, chair, on a table. And I saw that picture on their MySpace account, and I was like, you know what, I don't really want that person representing my company. If they're posting a picture of a baby in a high chair, which I think is their baby, and a bunch of empty beer bottles on the table around them, you know what I mean? Knocked over. That's not the kind of person I want working for my company. Yeah. So I think we do have to be, a, it's a, it's a two-way street, right? It's not just you're representing the company, but you're also representing yourself to a potential employer, which has been a hot topic for years anyway. You know, I think, you know, marketing agencies and marketing companies can create a persona of, of who you are as a company, right? Or as an organization. I personally, in my personal opinion, I feel like, my my persona and my organization is built of the people that are involved in that organization right so that's what it should be right mm -hmm. so like i said you know the, the family environment acting like it you know and that can be you know fighting also getting along right? it's everything right it sure, comes with the yeah. educating teaching you know passing that information on that's who we are right and so when you get the top 30 people within the organization you put them all in one room which is kind of what we did in the, at the summit, right? And you yeah. said, hey, you know what? They all get along. Look at look how, look how much fun they're having yeah. together, right? It's that one just... picture on that street was amazing. 
<laughs> right, we were all on that street there. I don't, I don't know where we were, but it was a like crazy ass picture, man. <laughs> the Acropolis one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Whitney was dancing with one of the waitresses. <laughs> so, you know, so Bobby, to your original point though, do you need to have somebody that actually monitors your social media? I think you do in today's day and age. Um, yeah. You know, it's it, you know we we work so hard to build our reputation to have one individual that could could tarnish it. It's something that everybody has to be aware of, um, you know, and it's it's going to be a necessary thing moving forward. Yeah. Look, we're coming up to the end. And I got to ask this one question. So I, I know that this actually has worked on my lot quicker than it was, I was supposed to. But there seems to be a balance that you three have struck. At least that's the 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 what we see on the outside. I don't know what goes on the, behind closed doors. <laughs> right. But from the from the outside, it seems like you three have struck a balance, which is very unusual. <laughs> By the way, let me just say that, okay? To have a balance like what I'm seeing and I've seen and witnessed, um, I mean, where does this energy come from where you guys recognize, hey, you know what? Alvin does this really well. Kurt does this really well. Sohel does this really well. I'm okay with that. I don't need to step on their slice of the pie. Where does that energy come from, Kurt? Well, first and foremost, I think that, you know what? It just happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I think, I think first and foremost, you know, I take a look at Alvin. Alvin has got, you know, that personality to go out. He talks to people. He engages. So he'll brings, you know, something completely different. He's got the accounting aspect. He completely understands where we're at all, always financially. And he also understands that from the model that he was in, this is how you go from two to 10 to 200, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the journey that we've been on. My experience kind of falls on the compliance thing and the operations side. So I think we all have our lanes. I think we respect each other's lanes. Um, we talk a lot. It's not that we don't disagree, but I think we all can come to a conclusion that yes, this is the best way we move forward as an organization. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna add to what Kurt said. So, you know, a lot of business you get in and you do everything, and obviously sometimes you do a good job and sometimes you don't do a good job, and it's okay. Um, when I came in here and operation more was my strongest suit. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do the financial. I'm going to do the secondary. I'm going to do the operation, you know, one at a time. And there's so much work. There's so much to do. <laughs> so when, you know, when I, he started in accounting and his secondary and IT, I got it by default because, you know, we had some problems in IT right. and, I had an, you know, I had an experience in all the field. So I, I, I started, I, I wanted to start with accounting, but I started with IT first. So, so after having those three items in my hand, I really don't want to touch what Kurt and Alvin is doing. <laughs> I got plenty on my plate. And, and I feel the same way for Kurt and Alvin that they go, you know what? I have a plenty on my plate. As long as Sohel is doing his job and he's mess, not messing things up and vice versa, I don't want to touch it. We will touch each other's department if we see a need. And, and that kind of like just automatically created uh, our own lane just having so much to do and so much to improve. And, and it wasn't anything like you guys actually, planned. I mean, you guys never talked no. about like, no. Just kind of, I mean, it's, <laughs> it sounds like a band that I was in, right? Everybody just got to show up with an instrument and said, okay, I play bass guitar. You know yeah. I, mean? That's I would say it's very, very happen. similar to that. <laughs> yeah. It was the universe saying, hey, you three together might be able to do some good things out there. <laughs> Go at it. <laughs> and that's interesting. I mean, I thought for sure you guys had some planning discussions before, you know what I mean? You guys decided to do something together and no, nothing. Wonderful. No, and here's the thing. I mean, and, and we're not afraid to ask for help. There's a lot of times that Sohil and I or Alvin and I will we'll tackle something together because we bring each, you know, something that we can bring to that, that conversation. Um, and but but we all seem to have our own lane and i think we respect each other for those lanes and it's worked out well so far so so you know one thing i'll tell you uh fabi that you know conceptually we are on the one page you know a lot of times not mm -hmm. all the time conceptually you know when it comes to customer service when it comes to uh you know treating a low when it comes to margin when it comes to you know working with so if you have to pick 10 area, you know, I would say good eight area, 
we have consensus. That's amazing. And, and the two area that we don't have a consensus, we somehow able to create a consensus. And, and that is the strength of three of us. That's cool. That's cool. Alvin, where do you see first option? I mean, today is June 22nd, 2021. Let's just go to 2025. I mean, June, you know what I mean? 2025, where, where is first option? We're having so much fun right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like keep keep this momentum going but you know it, it is it's 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 a balancing act right so while last year was amazing and this year is building up to be great you know keeping that balance of of people and processes and making sure that everyone's working together to so that we don't get to the point where we're no longer that family feel right that's what's important right i mean i think you know at the end of the day you know um we can get as big as we want to right and we have some pretty aggressive goals but it's got to be sustainable right and and i think that's that's what comes down to you know believe it or not we're selective we don't just hire anybody sure. i mean you know we'll we'll talk it and talk about it talk about it because we want to have like minded people that are part of the same growth strategy and the same mindset as we are um so that we're all doing the right thing by each other and then the sky's the limit yeah. All right. So I'm going to give you an example, Fabi. Oh, this sure. is a party which is invitation only, <laughs> and, and this party will continue as long as the organizers here, organizer of this party, which is B. Elvin and Kurt, are doing an amazing job to entertain those people who wants to join the party. Invitation only. Well, I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I hope I don't, I hope, uh, you know, in my college days, I, I, I used to get kicked out of parties. I hope that doesn't happen on this one. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was attributed to, but I always found myself getting kicked out. <laughs> anyway, look, we are at the end of the hour here. Thank you so much. We've gone way past what I thought we were going to do, but it's always good conversation. I appreciate y'all's times. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing for the company. And honestly, the industry, I think there's a lot of buzz about this in the industry right now. That's positive for all of us so i think at the end of the day we're making an impact i know you three are leading the charge and i appreciate that so once again thank you for your time and we are out gentlemen thank you thank, thank you, you thanks, Bobby. we hope you enjoyed this edition of laugh lend and eat the podcast you can now enjoy Fabi's article laugh lend and eat featured in the vision magazine please be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel where each month we are giving away some swag for our lucky listener to show off Thank you to our sponsors for their continued support, First Option Mortgage, and One Good One Recruiting. And remember, you have to be something, so be kind.